Well, the oil pan should be good to go. And now it's time to move on to the cam. This is the cam I'm using, that 68232.4. And on assembly, they want you to use this um, lubricant that comes with it. I also bought a bottle of this from Summit. So the tag on the cam says they want you to use their break-in oil or their additive. That's the oil we've been using to lube up the piston rings. So that's what we'll keep using. So they want us to use the assembly lube on the lobes, but on the bearing surfaces, just regular old break-in oil. So these little pumpers really help. Just going to cover all the bearing surfaces. And once you uh, pre-lube the engine by spinning the oil pump, these will all get lubed up anyway. Good to go. All right, so all the lobes are all lubed up. Now it's time to insert the cam. Take your time, go nice and easy. Just make sure the lobes don't scratch the bearings on their way through. It's just a time taking process, just be careful. And just give the bearings one more shot of oil before we slide them in the rest of the way. Before we put the cam sprocket on, tighten this last gallon plug to 30 foot pounds with some thread sealant. Now it's time for the timing chain. Let's pull this sucker out, clean it off with a healthy dose of some brake cleaner. Another thing that I should mention is with this style of block, normally you would use this plate with a couple of bolts to hold the cam in place. Not going to work with this cam. There's a different method with a bolt and a spring that we'll use. So I picked up this kit on eBay. It came with a crank bolt, spacer, oil slinger, three different keyways. Probably won't find one of these things. They don't make them anymore. I guess you don't need this oil slinger with the new harmonic balancer. I'm going to use it anyway. You can pick up the bolts and the keyways at pretty much any Jeep shop. Let's line up timing marks. The machine side faces the engine. The side with the timing marks on it faces the cover. What you want are these two marks lined up perfectly while it's installed. So on the cam we've got this pin here and on the crank we've got these two keyways. I've just installed this key right now. So what we want to do is kind of eyeball them, line them up, rotate the cam, rotate the crank until they look like they'll go on nicely. All right, so here's the cam gear. Get this pin hole lined up with this pin. And then rotate it around until the timing mark's facing it. Same thing with the crank gear. There's our timing mark, there's our keyway. Sucker on there. Rotate it around. That's about right. Now there's several ways to do the next step. This is the way that I prefer. Slide the gear off, set it in the chain. Slide the other gear off. Set it in the chain and get those marks lined up. Okay, now with the marks lined up, you wanna set the crank pulley on the crank and get that keyway started. Now with the keyway started, we can slide the cam gear over, get it on that pin, and push that sucker on into place. So we want these marks perfectly lined up from the crank straight through the marks, straight through the cam. This is the cam gear bolt that would be used with a factory camshaft if you were using this retaining plate. Since we're not, this is the different thread pitch bolt with the spring loaded pin on it that I got from 505. Per the instructions from Comp Cams, 
Threadwalker on the cam bolt. All right, healthy amount of Threadwalker on there. Let's drop the pin and spring out for now. Put that sucker in, and we're going to torque this down to 50. You shouldn't have an issue of that cam gear spinning. If you do, you can run a, a punch or a Allen wrench or anything through that galley plug just to hold it in place. All right, put the spring and pin back in. Oil slinger. All right, here's the Dorman timing cover. Looks like it comes with a front seal installed on it and a gasket. Just gonna clean it up, get it ready to bolt on. You can see this dimple in the cover. That's what the spring and thrust pin are for. I put pressure on it right here to keep the cam from walking forward against the cover. So I'm gonna start off by putting a thin film of Permatex Ultra Black on the gasket on both sides and then stick it to the cover. Gasket stuck on the cover. I'm gonna carefully start two bolts. with that locked head on all of them tighten them down to five foot pounds all right I was moving a little too fast when I take that harmonic balancer and while this cover is still loose on there before you tighten it down slide it on to help line up the seal okay and now with the balancer in there and the seal lined up try to get the top edges of the oil pan mating surface flush and then snug it up Tighten the bolts to five foot-pounds and these studs, the bracket, to 16 foot-pounds. Sandwich that sucker on there. Now let's bolt on that oil pump. This is a Mopar high volume pump. So here's the bottom of the pump. The camshaft synchronizer or distributor, whatever you're using, spins this, turns the pump, and this is what we're aiming for when we prelude the engine. This just slips in and then ends up lining right there. We need to install the new screen on it to press fit and there's a little guide, a little keyway on there to line it up. All right, so you're not supposed to clamp these down in a vise or bolt them to the block when you install the oil pickup tube. So I'm just gonna set it on the workbench and clamp it down with a uh, woodworking clamp, nice and soft, just to hold it steady while I pound that in there. So I don't have the oil pickup tube installation tool so I made this out of a piece of pipe from Home Depot. Just gonna kind of snap it on there. Use another piece of cutoff and then hose clamp it on. That should work just fine. Set it in there and then tap it into place. Okay, let's give it a shot. dishes are done. Pickup tube installed. Now it's time to drop it onto the block here. Lightly screw it down and uh, test it for depth in the oil pan. Also rotate the crank, make sure everything clears. Looks like everything clears. So we need to measure how deep that screen goes. And looks like it's about six and a half inches. And there's about nine inches right there. So that means that pickup tube is about two and a quarter inches too short. Wrong tube. That's why we chuck. Shot down to O'Reilly and grab this melling pickup tube. Looks like we're going to be just about right on this one. Got the new pickup tube on right around eight and three quarters. Just right.
gasket, pump, a little bit of Loctite on each bolt. Snug them up. 10 on the short one. 17 on the long one. All right, now it's time for the oil pan. I want to get that gasket mating service perfectly clean all the way around. I'm going to install these studs instead of using the bolts. These studs, I picked them up off of eBay. They have a little Allen socket in there. They're stainless steel. Use a little bit of this ARP on the threads and zip them in. There'll be four for the larger holes and then the rest are all the same. If I was using bolts, these are 5 16 18. The book calls for 11 foot pounds on these and the quarter 20 smaller ones it calls for 7 foot pounds. So I'm just going to run these studs down to 11 foot pounds. Go on these back two, the hole goes all the way through, so I'm just going to put my finger underneath, feel till it comes out, fast a couple threads, call it good there, and then when I'm putting the nut on, I'll have to lock it with an Allen wrench, zip it down. And the same thing for a lot of the quarter inch studs down the other side, most of those ones poke all the way through. Reprep that mounting surface, get it completely spotless before that gasket goes on. Using a Felpro one-piece gasket, it also comes with these cool little locking studs. These go in those 5 16 holes. And it's meant for when your vehicle's up in the air or just prone underneath it. You screw these in and then your gasket clicks into those to make it easy to get the pan on. Definitely save these, throw them in your box for next time. So these oil pans really like to leak around the gap with the timing cover and the block. Also in the back by the bearing cap. So I'm going to put a little bit of ultra black on each seam. Before you put any RTV on, make sure your pan is going to clear the oil pickup tube and fit on there nicely. All right, now it's time for that one-piece gasket. Don't use any goop on this thing. Only that little amount that we used to seal the edges of the timing cover and the bearing caps in the rear. If you're not using studs, use those four little inserts that come with the gasket. It makes it a heck of a lot easier to line this sucker up on there. All right, clean that pan out. Make sure that the mounting surface is nice and clean and everything on the inside is perfectly cleaned out. You don't want anything on the inside of your brand new motor. Line up that pickup. Slip it through that hole. And on she goes. All right, got her on there. As you're tightening it down, just use a regular wrench. Go around there. Do three or four laps and just tighten it a little bit as you go. By the time you come back around, they're loose again. It just it takes a while to get it down perfectly flat and then torque them down. Now it's time for the front freeze plug. Only I'm using an engine block heater. And when you install this thing, you tighten that screw down and it sandwiches this little triangle piece against this rubber O-ring, squashes it down, expands it in the hole. So when you install it, you want to make sure you get this at the angle that you want it. In this case, I'm gonna hook the wire onto this bolt hole here. So I'm going to put it at a slight angle, like so, so that my bracket will bolt right in. Got it in there just right. Now we're getting to about that point where it's time to install the lifters and head studs. Bolt the head on there. So I'm going to get these Harlan Sharp roller rockers starting to soak. You're supposed to soak them for a day in oil, so let's do that. All right, got them all cleaned up and in the bag. Pour in some of the break-in oil we'll be using and just drench these suckers for at least 24 hours. I like using the Ziploc bag so you can suck the air out and make that oil cover all the surfaces. All right, and I'm gonna reprep the block. I'm gonna chase every hole with a thread chaser, not a tap, a thread chaser. Run it down every hole. Clean it out with brake cleaner, dry it out, make sure there's no oil, residue, nothing in there, perfectly clean. All right, now it's time for the lifters. Uh, I'm gonna soak these things in oil just to fill them up, not pump them up, just fill them up with oil. So you can see the camshaft through the lifter hole. That's where we're going to be dropping the lifters in. All right, so just pulled this one out of the bag. It's been soaking overnight. This is the up part towards the push rod, the part that's going to be touching the cam. So I'm going to put a magnet here in the top. Then we've got to put some of this assembly lube on the part that's going to be touching the cam. Get it all gooped up and drop it in the hole.
All right, you can see it down in there. Now let's just get all the rest of them.